Good morning. Uh, we are talking about the Breitling Super Ocean Heritage this morning, which I'll confess, Creed is not a watch that I know a lot about the current model. I love history. I love the stories behind watches, and I especially love anything 1950s. I think it was the greatest decade. And I know in the 50s there was a dive watch craze. The Submariner came out in 1954. Mm -hmm. In 1955, Omega entered it with the Seamaster. Mm -hmm. And Breitling really had made a name for themselves in aviation at that time. They had really focused on the aviation market. Right. But in 57, they decided they were going to enter the dive market. And they did it in a big way. And their watch really outperformed all the others that were out at the time. It really did. And so the very first dive watch was the Blanc Pond 50 Fathoms. Right. And it was developed for the French dive team, which was subsequently after Panerai, by the way, because Panerai had been developed in the 1930s for Italians. Right. So everybody thinks of the Americans as having this big, huge dive craze, right? But that's actually completely the opposite. All of these watches started out as a need for dive watches for military operations, and only military operations. Mm -hmm. As a matter of fact, the Blanc Pond had a mil-spec version, which you can actually buy a, re a replica and duplicate of today. Mm -hmm. And these are actually replicas and duplicates of the original military version of the Breitling Super Ocean. Now, these were, for the first two or three years, and there's a little bit of debate as to exactly how long it was, they were only avail available to military operations as well. Okay. So these are watches that are not inspired by anything other than absolute need. Hmm. Um, so I believe... That's true definition of a tool watch. Absolutely. Yeah. So I believe uh, the fellow's name was Jean-Jacques Feichter. Okay. Yeah, if I'm doing that right in French, you know <laughs> I am about pronunciation. It's terrible. So... He actually had a need, he was a civilian diver, not a military diver, and he decided that one day he'd had too close of a call not being able to keep up with the time for his tanks. Okay. So he decided he needed a watch that would be able to have a movable bezel or at least some sort of timing device on the dial that he could watch while he was diving hmm. and then he wouldn't run out of air. That was literally the reason. When, he, when the French Navy picked up on this, uh, they immediately said the same thing. They're having trouble with it too, and they want to go ahead and, and have a joint cooperation with uh, Blanc Pont. Breitling immediately picked up on that because, as you said, the military, specifically the Royal Air, Air Force in uh, Britain, was using their Navitimer for their pilots' watches. Mm -hmm. So they said, well, the next great thing about this is let's go ahead and pick up on the military version of the dive watch so that we can kind of cover all, all bases, right? So introduction to the Super Ocean Heritage. Now, the one that I've picked up here is one that's very similar to one that I have. I didn't wear mine today, and I'm not exactly sure why. <laughs> I left the house not using my brain. Um, so I have this exact, it's called the Mercury Silver Dial. Now, one of the interesting things about it is they no longer make the Mercury, Mercury Silver Dial. That is a beautiful dial. It, it really is. I think it was a mistake to get rid of it, but at the same time, it makes the ones that we currently have extraordinarily popular and collectible. Hmm. It's a very easy to read dial. This one happens to have the ceramic bezel and believe it or not, the uh, Tudor MT56 XXX movement inside of it. They're it's actually, a Tudor movement. It is a Tudor Made movement. Made by a conjunction with, in, in the factory at Rolex. It absolutely is. Okay. And this is a 70 hour power reserve watch, whereas the previous versions were 42 to 48. Interesting. Yeah, it's got the Milanese bracelet, which is the original dive style bracelet. It was very durable at the time. Mm -hmm. this was, it, was, it had a purpose. It wasn't just for looks, but people really either have, they had a strong opinion about this particular bracelet. <laughs> um, you know, a lot of people just feel like it grabs the hair on their arms, so they don't particularly like it. I've never found that to be true for me, but I don't have the most hairy arms in the whole wide world either, so I'm not entirely sure. But well, this looks is, great. It's it, got a great vintage retro look about it. I mean, uh, you can just imagine Frank Sinatra sitting out by his pool in Beverly Hills wearing this watch. <laughs> well, the, this is really cool because this one has a throwback. There's a triangle. The hour hand is a triangulated hour hand. Okay. That, that's for a purpose. It picks up very easily underwater. It glows very well, of course, because it's the Super Luminova. Um, the sword style minutes hand, very easy to pick up on, very easy to read. Now, these are this is exclusive to this particular model, the shape and design of the hands for the Tudor. There's the specific design of the sword hand and then the specific 
specific design of the original throwback Super Ocean Harrier. So that's your telltale for which movements in the watch is based on the hands. That is correct, yes. Okay. And what's even more important about this watch to understand is that when you purchase the Breitling Super Ocean Heritage with the Tudor movement in it, you're getting something that is even more improved than the previous model with the ceramic bezel. And I think a lot of people really want that because it doesn't scratch. Right. Now that's not something that the original had. And also remember too that this is the Super, o Super Ocean Heritage 2 model as opposed to the original Super Ocean Heritage model. Distinctive name differences. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So let's move on to, let's go backwards in time a little bit. Let's go back to the original chronograph. So Breitling was the developer of the world's first chronograph with pushers outside the center of the crown. So the pusher on top was the first place that they uh, moved the pusher to from the center of the crown to operate the, chron the chronograph functions. Well, it was very short later, short time period later, that they also developed the second pusher for the chronograph. So when you look at Breitling and you see the chronograph and you see it in the dive watch, this was truly the world's first chronograph dive watch ever created. And this was, of course, Breitling's claim to fame always because they were the, uh, in joint cooperation with Tag Heuer and their movements, they actually created the, the total chronograph movement. That's a story for another time, but it's important to note that any time that you see a watch with two pushers or even a pusher outside the center of the crown, this is totally right. It was and this is much. such a great look with the two sub dials instead of the three we normally see on a chronograph. And it's so great to see a chronograph on a dive watch. That's something that a lot of their competitors don't do, and it's just a great look. One of the things that's interesting about the original uh, chronograph, which we don't have any of, which I would love to see us get a hold of. Of course, they would. one recently sold for $65,000, so it's probably not going to happen anytime soon. But the original, original chronograph had one pusher up top for the, the dive model. And it only had one minute hand collector because obviously divers only needed to know about how many minutes they were underwater, not how many seconds, right? Or hours. <laughs> Correct, right. <laughs> so you have the movable bezel that turns. Mm -hmm. it only, it's, it's, it's only a single direction. It's not bi-directional. It's only unidirectional because obviously you wouldn't want to go outside. You wouldn't want to gain time. You want to lose time, right. right? So if you accidentally bump it, it'll make it come up earlier instead of later. Correct, yeah, the safety features. So later on, they went to the three dial chronograph. Okay. And this is an interesting color. It's actually called bronze, but it has an orangey color. Mm -hmm. Over time, as this watch ages, it gets more orange to it. So it's a lot like the Rolex. Where, you know, you see a lot of Rolexes that fade over time. Yep. A lot of Pan and I dials that fade over time. This one does the same thing. I think it's one of the coolest colors that they ever had. Also, I want to highlight too that all Breitlings have the ability to have the bracelets and the straps changed out. So you can have crocodile, leather, rubber, or even the Milanese metal bracelet. There's all kinds of different colors and styles available. And also the buckles, they have multiple styles of buckles. This happens to be the deployment class. I, so the price of the buckle and the strap, $75 for the rubber strap, $375 for, I'm sorry, 275 for the buckle from Breitling if you want to get any of the accessories for them. That's really a lot less expensive than other companies charge for those accessories too. It's a great deal. Absolutely. So we've got the Super Ocean Heritage models. Let's move on to just what's called the Super Ocean. Okay. And there's a couple of different iterations of these over the years. The, my favorite is the orange and black. So it's got the Rahalt bezel in orange. Mm -hmm. It's got the seconds hand in orange. And then the dial is that black with that sort of machine silver Arabic numeral on it. I think it's just an awesome looking watch. This is a 42 millimeter watch, by the way. So 46 millimeters for the Super Ocean Heritage, 46 millimeters for the Super Ocean Heritage chronograph. For the double chronograph, this is a 44 millimeter. And you can actually see the size difference between the two. Now what is that bezel material on this one? This is a rubberized material. So this is an interesting bezel because the numbers and the indicators are actually machined into the bezel when it's made. Hmm. And then the rubber is poured in, the liquid rubber is poured in around the bezel to keep it from getting scratched. That's amazing. Yeah. And how does that wear? 
So it wears pretty well. Uh, it, the idea is, is that it won't scratch. The numbers don't scratch because the, the rubber is just enough above them where it protects them and if something slides across it, it doesn't. And they're made out of uh, stainless steel anyways, so okay. they're extraordinarily hard to scuff. But more importantly, the rubber does not scuff, scrape, or otherwise. It doesn't wear down, it doesn't chip, it doesn't peel, it doesn't do any of those weird things. Wow. Yeah, it's a really great piece. And actually, it comes in multiple different colors. This one happens to be orange. We've got blue, there's black, there's silver, and of course, the one that I'm wearing happens to be the yellow. Moving on to the next size up, the 44 millimeter, and you can actually see the differences between the two. When they're apart, it's hard to tell. Right. These are capable of 5,000 feet in depth, by the way. Which I do every weekend. Of course, yeah. absolutely. <laughs> My bathtub at home is at least 5,002 feet, so I have to do, be careful. Um, it does have the helium escape valve on the side, just as the 42 millimeter has the helium escape valve on the side. Uh, obviously, if you're taking a watch to that depth, it's going to need to decompress in the chamber with you, so you don't want to blow the crystal out of the top of it because of different pressure changes. Therefore, the helium escape valve is available on all of these models. But you know, as long as I've been selling watches, I've never seen, met a single person who actually needed that function as far as you know, what the kind of dives they do. You know, it'd be interesting to know how many people have actually dropped these off the side of their boat and they're just laying down on the <laughs> ocean and still functioning, right? right? Right. But can we, you know, can we go back? It's, you know, we need a metal detector to find all the different watches that have been dropped. So, the most recent iteration of this watch, this was the original 44 millimeter. This is actually called the Super Ocean 44. Okay. Because it's 44 millimeters in width. They've changed the bezel just a little bit in terms of how they designed the numbers inside the metal bezel, but it's still the rubberized inset inlaid bezel. Hmm. They also changed the Arabic numerals. Each one of them actually glow. So this watch is extremely bright underwater, and this one is also capable of the depth. It's thinner though. They've changed the body of the watch, made it a little bit lighter, a little bit thinner, easier to wear, fits up underneath your cuff, still has the helium escape valve. And of course, as with all Breitlings, I have to reiterate this, every single one of these Breitlings that I'm showing you today has the capability of having the bracelet changed to straps, leather, and rubber. Now, with Breitling, I always hear about there's a certain year where they switched to an in-house movement, but we were talking earlier about this one having a Tudor movement. What are the other movements that are possible in these? So all of these are Breitling modified ETA movements, which they've been since day one. Okay. Since 1957, they were always mm -hmm. an, an ETA movement modified by Breitling somehow, some way. And Rock usually, solid movement. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and the thing is, is that Breitling modifies them so heavily that they're almost an in-house movement at that point. Okay. Um, but the, the easy to service, not expensive to have service, that's mm -hmm. kind of the, the nice thing about it. Yeah. And if you notice on this one, it has the super high polished stainless steel bracelet. Yep. Everybody always wonders about how scratched they're going to get. Not a big deal. Breitlings are so durable and so absolutely well made that you can polish these and get the scratches right back out of them no matter how deep they are. And it's always going to look like the first day that you bought it. Awesome. Well, I think it's a great collection. I think that anyone who likes the idea of a dive watch, but doesn't want one that obviously looks like it's trying to imitate a Rolex Submariner. This is completely its own DNA. It's a totally different watch from anything that Rolex ever thought of. And uh, in a lot of ways, it, it, it's a different look that a lot of people might find more appealing than the Submariner. I do, you know, when I, again, my first choice was the Mercury Silver Dial. Mm -hmm. At first when I was sort of introducing myself to them, I wasn't the most fond of that color combination. Mm -hmm. And for some reason, um, one day I was, where I used to work, I just, for, for whatever reason, it had been gone out of the case for a while. We'd sold a bunch of them. We didn't have them for a while. All of a sudden we get one back in and I literally looked at it like I'd never seen it before. It's strange how colors kind of catch you like that. Yeah. You know, you see things and think, I don't like that. And then all of a sudden, boom, the next thing you know, you've got to have it. Right. So that's how I wound up with mine. Right. And so ETA movements on the chronographs as well, uh, super durable, all stainless steel casings. Uh, they, they are heavy. The 46 millimeter is a little bit bigger. This does come in a 42 millimeter, by the way, even with the ceramic or the painted bezel. And it comes in multiple different colors, blue, uh, lava black, or just black. Uh, this bronze color and the mercury silver of course is history so if you want that mercury silver you've got to pick it up I think we have one or two of them here currently. And just as a value proposition I don't know what the value on these will be in the future but right now in 2019 
you can get one of these watches in the mid threes, 3,500 to 4,000, and they're right. such a better value than what you see from a lot of other watch companies. By far, and just as accurate, just as durable, and just as easy to wear. All right, well, thank you. Yeah.